Hello, my name is Cynthia and welcome to my floss tube channel. I'm happy to be here with you today. It's February 25th, 2022. I'm coming to you from Fort Worth, Texas. And my content today is a little different than I usually share. If you're interested in seeing what I've been stitching, things I've been crafting and creating, then I'll have an update for you in about a week. But as this title suggests, I want to talk about the experience of creating a floss tube channel either brand new or revitalized or just getting some tips about the process. The reason I'm making this video is twofold. I wanted to encourage those that are interested in making a video and may feel intimidated or overwhelmed by the process, but really want to share. I've had a couple of comments from viewers that they would like some help with that. I also wanted to make this video because as much as there is out there on the YouTube, um, platform about how to create YouTube videos. I didn't really see a lot of floss tube specific content as to how it pertains to those of us that share our needlework and our crafts. And so I wanted to make something that was sort of a niche for those that want to share their needlework and their um, crafts and things that they create with their hands. So that's why I'm making this video. Um, I wanted to sort of start out with who this is for. As I said, if you're interested in creating YouTube or floss tube channels or growing, um, the first question you might ask yourself is why? Why do you want to start a floss tube channel or grow your floss tube channel? If you just want to share your crafts and you have no interest in how many people see it, if it's maybe for family and friends, which I've had some of my floss tube friends say is why they started a channel, then that's great. You know, you probably don't want to hear uh, what I have to share in this video and you can just check back with me in my next one. But I've also had or heard from other floss tube um, creators some frustrations as to, you know, it doesn't really seem like people want to see what I have to share or, you know, I guess I'm just going to not have a very big channel and and that's okay it's not a contest it's not a you know race to get to the most subscribers because that's a not a good reason to start a channel if you however want to start a channel because you want to make personal connections and friendships with other needle workers around the world and you want to encourage and inspire people then that's a very good reason to start a floss tube channel the way that i started and kind of went into this was thinking you know how can i contribute to someone else's knowledge or how can i inspire someone so it's not what the viewer can do for you. It's what can you do for the viewer. And having that at the forefront of your mind as you start your channel will help you to um, think of this as more, um, yes, you get a lot out of it. <laughs> you get a lot of connections and friendships and comments that are so sweet and so encouraging. It's been such a great thing for me. Um, but you also get to inspire and encourage with your creativity because there's no one else quite like you. So if those are your reasons for starting a channel, then this video is definitely for you. For the information that I'm sharing with you today, I did create a Google Doc. I suggest that you, if you really want to absorb this, um, maybe pause this video, go print that out and follow along. Or if you're gonna reference it back, it's a really helpful, I think, information sheet as to some things to keep in mind, some things to consider when you are filming a floss tube either for the first time or if you are a veteran, just some ideas that might you might find helpful. So I created that document and um, hopefully it is easy for you to access. I didn't want to have a PDF that you emailed me to get because that might get too uh, drawn out. It's a lot easier for it to just be there. So hopefully that Google Drive document will be helpful to you. And I'm gonna be referencing it as I look down just a little bit so I don't miss anything myself. I'm going to attach some videos about the nuts and bolts of how to set up your equipment, how to record 
looking at the background, looking at your lighting, different nuts and bolts about how to film a video. I don't really have the expertise and capability to share that with you. For one thing, I'm using the equipment that I use to video, so it would take another phone and some other helpers to um, capture that information and it is done so much more professionally than I can do. So I'm just gonna have those links below. What I will say though, as pertains to Floss Tube, when you decide on your Floss Tube name, um, really put a lot of thought into it. What is it that captures, encapsulates your love of stitching, your personality? Um, does it stand out your name? I like that my um, first and last name is part of my channel. So I hear a lot of people say, uh, what's her name? That lady that runs this channel, what is her name? Um, somehow we associate the channel name instead of the personal name. So because I wanted to feel more personal, my name is in my title, but you don't have to do that at all. Um, it's just something to think about. And then also if it associates with what social media you already have, say you have a really nice Instagram name, um, it's nice if those tie together. It's not totally necessary, but it does help people to find you easier. So find your name. You can change it later. Google does limit that. And also changing it is um, going to have some loss of momentum if you do that. Um, unless you, I did change my name, but I basically just annexed another phrase with the name I already had. So I don't think it affected people finding me, but it could, if you went to a totally different name, they may not know that that's you. So think about your name very carefully before you go forward, but don't let that be something that makes you be stuck because you can change it. Also attach a non-personal email to your Google account. You don't have to use, if you use a G email address and that's where all of your you know personal emails all of your business emails all of that goes to that I would have a separate email for your YouTube channel just so that you're not cluttering it up and losing comments from viewers the other thing is if you ever this if you ever um, try to change that decide that you don't want your personal email to be used you could lose your entire channel it has happened to another floss tuber i know of so make sure you have a separate email that's not associated with your personal and business if you use gmail the other thing is um, to gather some basic supplies i highly recommend filming with your phone the phones that we have today are so um incredibly sharp and good pictures. I'm filming on an iPhone 11 right now and it's it's just like I'm in the room with you probably but I've seen people try to use fancier cameras and what I see with cameras sometimes unless you have um, much more advanced equipment but just maybe an older camera sometimes the picture is very fuzzy grainy sometimes you hear clicking as the focus is adjusting and it can be kind of distracting so a phone is just so much more simple in my opinion, and a lot of us have those. So use your smartphone. I would invest in some kind of tripod. I got mine from a dollar a dollar store called Five Below. It's not even really a tripod. It's just a hands-free phone mount, and it has like a bendy kind of wire. I'll insert a picture of that to show you what that's like, but you definitely need something to keep your phone steady, and you might need lighting if you're um, unable to film during the day, or a microphone if you have problems with sound. But I will attach some videos, like I said, that recommend all of those supplies. Some of them around $20, $25, very affordable. And always have a, at least an outline in front of you of what you're gonna be saying so that you're organized and you don't forget details. And then just sit down and hit record. So those are kind of the basics of how to get started. Like I said, you need to read the, uh, or watch the videos that I'm gonna link below as to more specifics. If you want your channel to be seen in the first place, the first important thing to consider is your thumbnail. Across the board, as I look at different videos of how to grow your channel, how to have a successful floss tube or YouTube channel in general, thumbnails are always the most important. Um, a lot of floss tubers use the default that is picked by YouTube. YouTube screen grabs from different things that you're holding up. You might have something like this in your hand. Um, it could be a chart. It could be um, a piece of floss. It could be anything that has your face in it. They're going to grab and sometimes they're flattering and sometimes they are hideous to be honest. They've done it to me many times. Either my mouth is open, my eyes are rolled back, you know, catching yourself mid 
Word is not a flattering photo. So you do not have to use the default screen grab that YouTube picks for your floss tube. In fact, I highly discourage that if you can help it, you will have different choices that are provided to you. And, and usually there's one that's okay, but it's much more effective in my experience to create a custom thumbnail. There's several ways to do that. I will link below some videos that talk about some editing software on your phone. It's much easier to me to do the thumbnails on my phone. I use iMovie on my Mac computer, but the thumbnail creation on a phone is much simpler to me. So I use um, my Instagram collage software. It's an app and I screenshot a lot of times to get the right pixelated um, form that I need. But I will show you how the professionals do it more um, for Android or for iPhone. I only know iPhone, so I didn't want to be so one-sided in providing that information. But the thumbnail is the most important thing for people to see your channel in the first place. If you have a strange thumbnail, a lot of times people will not click on it. A lot of them will, especially if you're an established channel and they know you, um, but you're still going to get more views if you have an appealing thumbnail. Um, the other thing that can catch people's attention is an appealing title, a descriptive title about what's happening in your video. I've seen some very unappealing titles like my dog barks the whole time, this is a hot mess, <laughs> different things like that where maybe you're trying to be self-deprecating but really you're turning people away and we all have some videos that are better than others, but making an unappealing title is not going to help grow your channel. So try to be descriptive of what is in your video. Always include the words floss tube and a number um, sequence because the YouTube algorithm recognizes floss tube videos as a series and is much more likely to recommend your channel in some side of in some kind of sequence or recognize that you are making a series. So they really, the algorithm really likes a series. So, and it, it helps needle workers to find you if you have floss tube in your title. So I would consider definitely adding that, but not just that, don't just say floss tube number 30. Um, you can, but I find it more helpful if you are describing in your title what it is you're going to be talking about in that um, video. Maybe you're going to be sharing a lot of spring finishes or bunnies, or maybe you have a particular title of sampler that was a huge finish for you. Title your video that people will be interested. Like, oh, she finished, um, you know, all creatures that's right here behind me. <laughs> or, you know, she had a big finish. I want to see what that is. Something that's appealing that makes people want to click. And don't use self-deprecating titles there. The other Another thing is to fill out your description box. Um, when people are searching YouTube, this is something that I experienced as a brand new stitcher. I did a lot of searches how to do certain stitches or how to um, do certain things like organize your stitching. And I found that it wasn't very searchable. Floss tube is not very searchable. And part of that is because people don't fill out their description boxes. If someone wants to see what are some finishes of all creatures great and small, um, I bet you'll only get about 20% of the videos that may cover that piece because they're not listed in the description box. And I know it takes extra time um, you don't have to put links to everything. I know people appreciate that, but maybe you're not um, as comfortable doing that. Um, but at least to list out what your pieces are called, what your work is called, or if you're sharing some kind of tutorial that um, you want to be a resource to people, it has to be included either in your title or your description box. The title only allows so much room. So if you want to share how to frame or how to finish in a certain way, make sure you're filling out your description box. It's a way to make your channel more findable, more searchable. People will um, maybe want to know what you're sharing and don't you want them to find you? So um, that's important as well. And then the last thing about being seen, which you might think I would use as the first topic, but I'm actually putting as the last, <laughs> is to be well lit. Um, I know we can't all afford, I don't have any light boxes or any ring lights. I did see a recommendation in one of the videos that I was looking at for a $20 clip on uh, ring light for your phone that I might look at <laughs> purchasing, but I have so many windows in this house, luckily, that I can always find a window to sit in front of. I do have a um, drop cloth curtain 
that I've used on all my windows and I keep that that curtain closed so that I'm not getting like a you know an angle of light across my face or hopefully the glare on my glasses is not too bad and that's because I'm actually in front of a filtered window so there's lots of ways to um, use lighting that can not be expensive um, and I know some days are cloudy but you'll still get good enough light with your camera on your phone and as you show your stitching make sure that it's not shadowed I mean a lot of what we're doing is basically like show and tell so you want to be about here's my camera right in front of me arm's length away and you want to hold your um, pieces still and in frame so that people can see it if you just kind of flash it and put it down I've seen a lot of complaints about that with other viewer other floss tube um, creators as well that you didn't spend enough time showing me so um, don't spend too much time but don't spend too little there's kind of a sweet spot there and definitely hold it still and make sure that they can see what you're doing sometimes I even put in some editing of close-ups if I'm trying to show a specialty stitch that I did or something that I changed yeah, I might even insert a photo of a very close a picture of your needlework that's one of the beauties of floss tube is you're not just seeing still pictures on Instagram you're seeing moving video still not as good as in person as we all know everything looks be more beautiful in person but at least you're able to show what you're creating and inspire people and if it's dim or shadowed then they might click away and not get to see what you've worked on second tip I have for growing your channel is to be heard. This is one of the things that I have struggled with in my channel. I have a very soft voice and I have had lots of complaints, especially in the middle, even people putting all caps shouting at me, I can't hear you, exclamation point, which I felt was a little rude, but I understand it is frustrating if you're trying to share something and you really want to know what someone is talking about and you can't hear them. And the main thing I have done is listen back to my videos before I post, before I share them on YouTube and make sure that I can hear what I'm saying. Um, I used to use a microphone. My hair is such that um, I was constantly getting lots of brushing sounds. It almost worked too well and I kept flicking it during, I would bump my frames up against it from what I was showing with my floss or with my um, stitching or I was just constantly bumping it and it actually was less helpful instead of more helpful. I do use that microphone still that I purchased. It was just a clip on for about $20. I do use that when I do voiceovers so I find it very helpful. I can hold it right to my mouth and just talk much better than my computer um, microphone or even my phone. But the way I've gotten around my sound problems personally is I go on my iMovie and I bump my video, my audio all the way up to 400%, which um, I don't think is too loud for my voice. It may be way too loud for your voice. It would just be something that you need to experiment with and you can always um, change that. The other thing that people complain about a lot um, is the music being a different volume. And it is kind of frustrating when you're watching a video and you turn it on and blah, 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 the music blares out at you and you quick hop up and turn it down. Um, and then they start speaking and it's at a really low volume and you're like, ah, you got to get up and turn it up again. So that's a very simple fix in your editing. If you want to add sound, make sure you know how to do it because it's still editing to add sound. You can go ahead and get in there. I use my music at 30%. I like things to be calm in my videos and I get a lot of compliments about the tone of my video being very calm and peaceful. When I'm stitching, I don't really want frenetic or loud music or, or loud conversation either um, and that's just my personal preference you do you <laughs> if you like loud and bubbly and energetic then that's your personality that's what you need to do but for me I like the sound to be um, a little more peaceful and calm and so I'm very careful with my music now all of these tips I am sharing I have done incorrectly all of these things I have made mistakes with, and I'm still not perfect. There may be times when I go through an entire video and I get a little bit in a rush and I miss some of my music and it will blare at you. And you know, we're all people, <laughs> we make mistakes. Don't be too hard on yourself because once you publish your video to YouTube, you can't edit it other than to take something completely away. You can't change it. Um, I've had to edit things out before and it's very nerve wracking <laughs> after the fact if your video has been published, you just have to take it down. So don't be too hard on yourself if you make some mistakes about sound and viewers, 
Also, please give grace, especially to a newer channel. If their sound is a little bit off, you can kindly mention that to them, but don't shout at them like that lady did to me or say, you know, this is terrible. What are you thinking? You know, give them a little grace. It's not as easy as you might think to get your sound correct. The other thing that's is a distraction in your videos that might cause people to click away is background noises. If you are, um, in a really loud spot. Maybe you have a dog that barks the whole time or a lawnmower going. Um, a little bit of that is okay, but if it persists the whole video, um, people might click away. Like here comes a jet. I, I live in Fort Worth, as I said, so I'm right in the Alliance um, flight zone and I can't control the air, uh, air traffic. <laughs> so that's gonna happen for me. But as much as you can, try to eliminate distracting noises or loud um, background. I try to find times when my kids aren't here. Sometimes you can sort of hear them in the background. They're at school today, so it's fine, but do your best to eliminate as much distracting noise as possible. Also, put your phone on airplane mode. I made a mistake with this in my video two videos ago. I have a pharmacy that loves to call me and I just had an interruption because I didn't follow this advice. I told you I'm not perfect and make lots of mistakes, but if possible, remember to put your phone on airplane mode so that you don't get a call right in the middle. Um, that happened to me when I was doing voiceover in my Stitch With Me video a couple videos back, and it's very quiet because I have headphones on or I have my microphone on, so I left it in there, but it can be jarring if you get a phone call and distracting. So try to put it on airplane mode. And if you have a soft voice like me or people tell you I can't hear what you're saying um, you could consider purchasing a microphone I don't think it's necessary right away as long as you're an arm's length away from your phone your microphone should pick you up but like I said some of us have very soft voices so you might consider a lapel microphone or even a stand microphone that is not super expensive and it does make a big difference in the sound quality of your video another consideration that has to do with um, being heard what you're saying if you have some distractions like um um a lot of that it's just a verbal pause everyone does it i do it probably more than i should you can work on that don't be so hard on yourself at the beginning but you can sort of notice as you're going through if you need to pause while you're thinking of something or have more detailed notes in front of you so you're not searching as much that will help but it can be a little distracting if you're always looking for a word and, and filling that with um um as um see <laughs> I do it too just work on it we all we all can get better at that another consideration is limiting the time that you share personal life updates I think it's good to share that I think we all have different aspects to our life that kind of influence our needlework that have to do with what we're um, doing, how we're creating, what time we have. But some of the videos where it's 10 or 15 minutes before you get any stitching, uh, people will click off or um, they might skip ahead and keep watching. But if it continues, they may not um, subscribe to your channel or watch your channel. And, and I, like I said, it's totally up to you. It's just something to consider but I like to maybe put that at the end of the video so that I'm getting to the stitching as quickly as possible. When I start my videos, I like to show stitching literally within about eight seconds. That seems a little bit um, strange, but I read a statistic about how our attention span when we're clicking through things or when things are loading up on our screen is about eight seconds. So I introduce myself and I go straight to clips of some stitching, either in my home, previous finishes, stitching around so that people are interested and inspired. And then um, I'll go on to talk about other things, but always, try to focus on what it is that you are sharing and why and maybe limit some of the talk okay so i've talked about being seen i've talked about being heard the last point is to be connected which is the main reason i wanted to make this video for me the biggest benefit of floss tube as well as getting to get through some of my stitching and feeling some sort of accountability to to make things to show y'all um, i've really enjoyed getting to know not just other floss tube creators because um, we have been able to connect through zoom and some other things but also my viewers just the same viewers 
commenting on my video week after week or month after month over the last three years. I know their names. I know different things about them. Maybe they've email, emailed me a prayer request or share with me um, a pattern or a letter or I just have really, really felt like my life has been richer because of those connections. And there are some things that you can do um, some pretty easy things to enrich that experience for you. You can film a video and post it and then never look at it again and never read the comments, but I don't think that's why um, you are interested in this video or even interested in making a floss tube. The one that I really want to um, encourage you to do is to answer your comments. I know it can get busy and as your channel grows, sometimes I can feel a little overwhelmed by how many comments I'm receiving. It's a good problem, but it is a a time commitment to answer back even if it's just to put a heart it will show your face with a heart so they know that you've seen their comment you've responded to their comment that's better than nothing for sure um, but YouTube loves it as well when you are commented when someone comments on your video and you answer them back YouTube sees that as engagement these people are interested they want to talk about what was shown they want to have more um, interaction they will recommend your video more if it has more comments and if it has more comments from you they count those as well so it's really a benefit to you just in the algorithm if you're commenting on others comments that's back and forth and that's what YouTube wants so and that's gonna benefit you you'll get to remember uh, who it is that comments one thing I personally do I think I've learn this maybe in speech class or in something with ministry is always try to say that person's name. Now you can't say their name if their channel is just like stitching, you know, 101 or something. You don't know who, what their name is necessarily, or maybe they have their husband's account, but um, if they have a comment with a name like Cindy or something, I'll say, Cindy, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you come back sometime. Or I, I use their name in the comment and sometimes I sign my name as well, just to be more personal because any uh, anybody that sees their name thinks oh that's for me <laughs> you know it, it it makes us feel special and uh, just like when you meet someone new you repeat their name back to them it's sort of like that it's it's more of a connection for them and it helps to cement that name in your mind as well like I know um, Cindy Gade always comments on my videos and Loretta Henderson and um, Sean Pennington, I'm not sure I'm saying her name correctly, but I know these names because they comment over and over and have for years. So they're my friends now, I feel like, and that's just a few. There's so many more of you that I could name, but I mean, those names are fresh in my mind because I've seen their comments and responded so many times. And the other thing to be connected with your viewers and to grow connections is to film consistently. And I know life gets in the way. I don't think you need to apologize a lot about that, but if you really want to grow your channel and you really want to feel connected to people, just like you would with a friend that you don't see for months and months at a time, or you never call, you never email, um, our videos are the way that we reach out. And, you know, I've been through some really um, trying times over the last couple of years. I've had some longer breaks because of losing my mom or being very critically ill. Um, that's going to happen, but you come back and you try to be consistent. And I would suggest starting out not to make videos every week um, unless you just really feel like you'll get you're gonna have the time to me that is more of a burnout um, recipe especially if you're brand new to YouTube I would prefer what I did was starting once a month and then feeling like I want to make even more and I'll do every two weeks lately I've been making some kind of in-between videos like this just to continue those connections. So, but being consistent is one of the best ways to grow your channel. Social media grow or moves quickly and people forget um, about your channels. And if you don't post a lot, they might unsubscribe as well. So they won't see your videos anymore. But, um, you know, communicate. If you're ill or if you're having a, a struggle, you might go on and, and share in the community tab, you know, hey, my mom's really ill or, hey, you know, we're going through some stuff, but I miss you guys. I'm thinking about you, you know, just those connections, just like you would with a friend in real life. Um, another thing that may seem kind of, um, I don't mean this to sound critical, but this is something that I learned from Nick Nimmin. I will link his channel below. He has almost a million subscribers. I think he has like 875,000 when I checked yesterday. Um, and he's very 
good at breaking down ways to grow your channel, ways to connect with people, ways to be appealing as a channel. He's not talking about floss tube at all, but one of the things he said that they found was the most effective thing to say within the first 10 seconds of your video. I think he said it might've been within 30 seconds, but right away is to say the word you. Um, and that goes against what most floss tubers do. You probably don't even notice it, but you might. Um, I never say, Hey floss tube or Hey y'all. Hey guys. Sometimes I say, Hey guys, um, or you all, but how many times do you sit down to watch a floss tube in a group? Are there three or four of you gathered around, gathered around this video right now? There might be, maybe your family's watching on a video, but for the most part, you're watching a floss tube video by yourself. <laughs> so to say, Hey guys, or Hey everybody out there, um, isn't really connecting in quite as personal a way as saying, I'm so glad you're here with me today. I'm glad to be here with you today. Uh, that's a very subtle thing, but in the psychology of how our minds work, um, we respond to it. It makes us feel seen like, oh, she's saying hello to me. I know that sounds silly, but it really does make a difference. And they've done lots of studies about it as to what people respond to in YouTube videos and saying, hey guys, or hey y'all, or something like that isn't as connecting as saying, I'm glad to join you. I'm glad you are watching today because most of us are watching by ourselves. Just something to think about. Um, the other thing to think about is sharing giveaways. I know some people feel like that's maybe, um, oh, I don't know. They, they might shy away from that, but giveaways do help you connect with more viewers. Maybe they wouldn't comment unless you were giving a giveaway, but then you get to know them a little bit and they'll be more involved later in your channel. Everyone likes to receive um, different things in the mail, maybe a chart or um, even just some finishing work. I've done my finishing for viewers before as a prize. I'm probably going to do that in my 7,000 subscriber giveaway. So giveaways do give connection and they also solicit more comments. So YouTube likes that. They like to see engagement. They like to see people interacting with your channel and a giveaway, especially in the beginning of your channel. Um, a giveaway is something that's very helpful in growing connections with your viewers. The last thing I want to say, I hope I haven't left anything out. I've got this handout attached, as I said, but the last thing I want to say is don't be um, too offended by rude comments or thumbs down. I'm still working at this. This is something I really struggle with. I was watching a Teresa Bennett video that I will link below. She gave a list of 10, like she does in a lot of her floss tube videos. And she wanted to um, ask people what they wanted to see in floss tube videos or things that bothered them or things that they would encourage people to do. And um, one of them said, don't be too offended by thumbs down. Don't let it bother you too much. And Teresa said, it's like if you were talking to someone and saying, here's my sampler and I worked on this and they started going boo, boo, right in your face. That's what it feels like when people give a thumbs down. I equivalent, uh, I kind of equivalent it with uh, somebody throwing a rock at me. <laughs> it's like, ouch, <laughs> you know, I don't know why they thumbs down. Maybe they don't have any interest in needlework and they clicked on my video by mistake, or maybe they just don't like my face. I don't know, but it does um, sort of hurt my feelings. I'm so, sort of sensitive and I'm working on being tougher. I um, can read a rude comment and think about it for days. And what I've done lately is just delete those comments. <laughs> Some of my comments lately have been very demanding about why didn't you do this? Or you said you'd do this and you didn't. And just very, um, I don't I guess rude is the word I would say to me. And you don't have to, you don't have to hear that. You can delete those comments and, uh, and try not to make you, um, try not to make, mm, try to, move on from those comments, I will get 350 thumbs up and three thumbs down. And I'm thinking about those three. So it's an exercise when you put yourself out there in developing a thicker skin and keeping your eyes on why you made this floss tube uh, channel in the first place to connect to people, to inspire, to encourage. Um, those are the reasons why you do it. And don't let those naysayers and um, mean girls or mean guys <laughs> keep you from continuing if you have the passion to do so. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it's not too long. 
And if you have any questions, please leave those below, kind comments, please. And as I said, I am not an expert. I do not mean to sound critical in any way. I've made all of these mistakes just about on this video that I've listed. Nobody's perfect. I'm not saying you have to be perfect to make your channel, but I definitely think there's some things that you can be thoughtful about and that you can consider when you're starting a channel or even looking at the channel you already have that can help you be more connected, be better heard, and be better seen. Thank you so much.